Welcome everybody to the Sharon Zone. I am here with my friend Chris Cohen, who is the master of social media for many um, big music artists. And uh, if you wouldn't mind letting us know, hi, how are you doing today, Chris, by the way? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I am uh, based near Raleigh, North Carolina. We're we're getting some storms, but uh, you know, it's a little bit of sun peeking out through. So not too bad. Not too bad. Cool, cool, cool. And so, tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, I know that your your empire is expanding with your your media <laughs> empire is expanding. But um, wh- what have you been doing for the fa- the past few years with social media? Um, I do. It, it's hard to describe. I've been trying to find a good term that that encapsulates it, and it's. And so, if anyone has a suggestion, I'm open to it. I know country uh, rock with a twist of lime. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> if that were not already taken. Yes, yeah. That that would be me. Um, I the the, the default I've been falling toward lately is content marketing and. Because I work with uh, a number of bands, such uh, as Huey Lewis and the News and Cowboy Mouth and the Fabulous Thunderbirds. Uh, and I also work with various businesses. And it's, you know, and, and it does involve a lot of social media work. It also involves stuff on their website. But mainly it all comes down to helping them create interesting, good content. And, you know, I, as I've said before, you know, I, I, part of the motivation for starting this business was just I got tired of seeing all of these interesting, talented musicians just posting photos of their lunch. And, you know, I thought I'm always been a music junkie and I love talking to musicians and talking about their music and their songwriting process and all of that. And none of that was happening. Uh, from what I saw, for the most part, in you know, in the world of social media or on their websites, and so I just kind of uh, took a gamble and and dove in, and I've been doing it for for seven years now. And and again, it's I help pull their best content out of them, and you know, whether we use it on social media or website or wherever, it's it's helping them tell their story. Well, you definitely have quite an impressive list of clients that you breeze by that's very impressive um and so you do you do things like like short form interviews you do things like um what else do you do as far as content you do like a little mini kind of like questionnaire things just different things like that well the the foundation of everything i do actually kind of is like this it comes down to the interview um and it's my favorite part about it all and it's it's where i get the the best amount of material so a lot of the the work i do is i will uh sit down and interview my clients and talk about their business again talk about their music their songwriting process how they've developed as a musician and through those interviews through those conversations is when you get all these really interesting stories and insights and um, what I do is I record that and then go back, I transcribe it, and then from that pull out all of these interesting tidbits. Um, and so in that way, it's I'm not putting words in anyone's mouth. It's still them. It's still their own unique way of telling their story. But I just kind of help draw things out of them and, and try and get them to think more deeply about what they do um and maybe come at it from a different perspective and come at it from the fans perspective um and then that becomes the foundation for all the content going forward on their social media and on their website i also help you know promote shows and and uh, you know work as a liaison between the band and the venues uh especially if they you know want help promoting a show or they are going to boost uh, posts on social media to help advertise uh, that band's appearance at their venue. So but, if if like if Huey Lewis is playing at um, a, a venue and the venue needs to get a a a quick video from them saying, "Oh, we can't wait to be at X 
uh, venue in next month on this date. We're looking forward to seeing everybody in Cincinnati. Is that something that you would you would uh, go about getting? Yeah, that's that's definitely part of it. Or sometimes it's just you know creating a post, um, and you know just something that has a you know a cool photo and lists the venue and the date, and then by setting up the venue as an advertiser on the Facebook page they can then go in and put some money behind the post and they can target it to, you know, something within like, let's say a 25 mile radius of where they're located. Mm. And that way, you know, again, we're not giving up, the artist is not giving up control to the venue, but it's working in tandem with them. And a lot of times they, you know, have budget set aside for promoting a show and more and more this has become a great way of promoting a show and so we help them you know set it up and we'll you know have the ticket link and tag them and everything and then all they have to do is is just go in and boost it and and this way they're reaching that artist's fans uh directly you know as opposed to if they post it on the venue website which they do too but then they're hitting you know people that follow the 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 website Mm. of the venue and so by boosting posts that are on the artist's page, this way they're more directly reaching the fans of that artist. Ah, see, I learned something new every time I talk to you. That's very <laughs> interesting. I never would have thought of that. God, I'm glad I do this. And All right. <laughs> thank you for being on. That's very interesting. So um, would that be applicable to like an event that you would create on that band's um facebook page or would it be and or would it be like a a poster type thing um i mean you know uh, we i definitely help to make sure the event section of a band's facebook page is filled with all their concert dates Mm um but i don't know i've i've just found it good to to have posts um, that are separate from that or in addition to that that go out that the venue can then go in and boost. Now, do they decide which posts they're going to boost or do you? Um, well, usually we just uh, uh, coordinate and they say, hey, we you know we want to boost a post promoting their show coming up on such and such a date. And I'll say, okay, I will set it up. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll get one of the, the band's pre-approved photos and I'm, I'm not the greatest graphic designer, so I just do very basic graphic design, but it's readable and the point comes across and again, band name, picture, uh, location and date, Mm -hmm. and then I'll set it up in the text box. So it tags the venue uh their page and also links to the page where they can buy tickets um and the advantage also of of setting up posts that way is because as you may know facebook owns instagram and so Mm -hmm. if you go in and you know the venue boosts a specific post on facebook they can also select for it to run on instagram oh is that right yeah so if you're advertising on facebook you can you can select to have that same ad run on Instagram? Yes. Oh, see, and the, I've learned two important yeah. things. <laughs> and <laughs> this the, additional, is good. the additional bonus there is, uh, as you may know, the only active link um, for most Instagram accounts is in the bio, where most people put mm-hmm. their link to their website or their tour dates page, or if they just debuted a new video, they'll put it there. And often you'll see them do posts on Instagram where they'll say, hey, we just put up a new video, link in bio. Because you can't link from individual Instagram posts. But if you do an ad that gets pushed out to Instagram, that can be linked to a ticket page or wherever you want it to go. Oh, see? These are great things to know. So everybody listening, all you up-and-coming musicians or uh, people, you know, with any kind of business, this is really, really good stuff to know because I didn't know this either. And, you know, if you need someone to do it for you, then here's the guy right here. (laughs) (laughs) This is good Uh, stuff. I I wanted to ask you though, um, I wanted to go back a little bit to the interview that 
that you were saying. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. How's the audio? To their fans. Okay, I think I just lost audio, so we'll just keep going. And okay, can you hear me? I'll clean it up in post. Um, I can hear you now. So okay, okay. So just to repeat, just in case, um, you can do ads in Facebook where you target uh, people who have shown an interest in the specific band, mm-hmm. um, but that's not as accurate as boosting a post that's on the band's page and therefore targeting people that actively follow that page. Gotcha. So basically you are targeting whoever likes their page. Is it geographically or just whoever likes their page? Um, Usually the venue will set it up geographically. So I'll set up the post so it's automatically, you know, going to run on the band's page and be coming from the band And then I'll tell them, okay, it's set to run on this day at this time. And then once it runs, they can go in and they can put money behind it. And they can do further targeting once they put money behind it and say, okay, you know, uh, you know, show it to fans who follow this page who live within 50 miles of Akron or whatever the town is. Right. I'll tell you, I'm going to this is this is really, really great for this podcast, for a DIY musician podcast, because I'm literally going to use exactly what you're talking about right now, because we're opening for Brett Michaels again at Indian Ranch in Massachusetts, Mm -hmm. September 9th. So Indian Ranch, once we were announced for the show, they made me, um, my band page, a co- manager or whatever, administrator for Mm -hmm. the event. So Mm -hmm. I keep on, uh, you know, posting in the event to get people, you know, excited about it and excited about us. But I'm going to do this exact thing where I'm going to take the event. I'm going to run some ads from my page for the Brett Michaels and Tim Sharon band. And then I'm going to see um, about pushing it to my Instagram as well. And then it will link out with the tweets yeah. and everything. No, I think that would be very cool. And the nice thing about also advertising with Facebook and thus Instagram as well is you can just do a test of like a dollar. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't have to be a huge outlay of cash. And if and if that gets a good response, you know, put more money behind it. If it didn't and you want to tweak the audience or the demographics or the geo targeting, you can do that and then try it again for another dollar. And, it, and so that way it's not a huge cash outlay. Yeah. And they literally so to use this example, Webster Mass is where Indian Ranch is. They literally have the um, excuse me, the 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 map the map feature where you can put you know or if it's whatever whatever you said um cleveland ohio or something um, right you can put the circle a radius is what i'm trying to say around Mm -hmm. 10 miles around it or 150 miles around it and you can then shoot for only that demographic in that geo area and then those will just be like in my case, it'll be my fans that follow my page in around that city, maybe a hundred miles, right. fifty miles, whatever it is. Yeah, and that's very, exactly. very specific and very targeted. So I think that's why uh, Facebook is really winning the uh, winning the ad wars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, although you know, and but I'm still. I'm still bullish on just generally posting about shows and pushing out to all the fans, if only because so many times with bands, I've seen a fan in City A tag a friend in City B and tell them, you know, hey, Steve, you really need to go check out this artist and he's playing near you next month. Gotcha. Yep. So so definitely be be posting. Um, All right. So here's here's a question from, say, I were an up and coming, you know, band or, or artist and 
Um, you know, I don't do too much on social media. Maybe I'm a little, I don't know, shy about it. What would you suggest just starting with like frequency? Say they have a show coming up the end of the month and it's the Mm -hmm. first of the month. What kind of frequency would you, would you recommend people post? Which is Uh, a tough question because you're posting about other things as well. But I mean, just for that one show in between posting about other stuff. Right. Um, well, let's see. A number of the artists I work with, they have booking agents um, who, in addition to copying me on their tour calendars, they will also follow up with the venues to find out how ticket sales are going. And so sometimes that determines um, how much we need to push a show. If it's maybe a little bit slow, you know, we'll post about it a little bit more often. Uh, but you know, if it sells out or is close to selling out, then all right, we don't need to hit it as hard. Um, but I mean, I think you can do, you know, at least once a week and not get on anyone's nerves about it. Um, and you know, that's a, that's a fairly safe way to go. Okay. So do you think that maybe looking at DIY musicians, independent musicians, do you think they, for the most part, and it's hard to generalize? generalize? Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm good with words. (laughs) (laughs) I write songs and stuff. You're right. (laughs) (laughs) Master lyricist. Yes, I am. Songsmith. Wordsmith. Um, It's hard to pinpoint, but do, do you think indie artists... Under post or over post? Um, hmm. You know, in a way, I see both. And the thing is, it's either under posting, um, you know, and just really just not posting that much of anything, or over posting and over posting of the wrong stuff. Again, yep. pictures of you know, their lunch, pictures of an interesting tree outside their hotel, you know, it never has anything to do with their music. And you don't have to be selling all the time. You don't have to be pushing people, buy tickets, buy tickets, buy tickets. Um, And in fact, you know, I argue that's a lot of what I do is just help balance out all the sales messages by digging into more interesting Uh, universal stuff about, you know, how they wrote a particular song or why they prefer this guitar and what, you know, maybe alternative tuning they use to get this particular solo out of it. Um, And so that way it's not like, okay, you're not just selling or asking people for money every single time you post. Mm -hmm. This way it kind of balances things out. Um, and so, you know, in that sense, I think it's 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 ideal for for someone, you know, to, a musician to post like five days a week. Again, if it's it's something of quality, and then you know, if you're if you're intermixing that with posts about, hey, I'm going to be appearing at this venue on this date and this city on that date, it it balances out, and it's it's not so much of the hard sell. Yeah, so it's not so much always trying to sell something and on the other end it's not always you know 100 selfies yeah exactly you've got to balance the selfies with the selling (laughs) right right and you know i think that it definitely is a balancing act that's that's why people need someone like you um and also going back to the, the whole interview process because then if you if you do a relatively um in depth interview with the artist or the musician then you have all this micro content for that you can pick from for the future, which you can yes. use in all sorts of different things, which most people don't have. You know, if you're in a band or a recording artist, you know, and you're independent, you you don't have that. You're not going to sit down and interview yourself. And that's very hard to be like, to just start talking about yourself instead of having someone interview you because someone like you can pull it out of someone, but to do it that yourself is just kind of awkward. Yeah. Or, you know, they might put something out there 
that to them is rather obvious or usual and uh, me being the layman will ask, well, wait, what do you mean by that? Or, mm-hmm. um, and I'm trying to think of a good, good example of, of what that would be. Um, well, you're a drummer, so you must have gotten some interesting stuff between Rich Redmond and um, the other drummers that you work with. Right. Um, or, you know, here's one where it's, um, okay, not, not a client, but I interview lots of non-client musicians with, with, the uh, the music podcast. So, uh, and it's one I just pushed out a week ago, which was an interview with a drummer named Greg Lohman, who, um, he was the drummer and music director for Kelly Pickler for a decade. Now he's the drummer for Easton Corbin. And, you know, so we were talking about, you know, all this different kind of stuff. And I, and I mentioned, I said, you know, I've been looking at photos of, of you playing and I noticed you play open handed. In other words, the, he doesn't cross his arms to play the hi hat and the snare. Oops, sorry. I mean, hit the mic. <laughs> um, and, and, and he said, yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's something he's done for so long. He doesn't even think about it. He learned how to, um, you know, play with cross sticks, um, but then he, you know, learned how to do it open so that he can just sit down on a right-handed kit, and 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 how like his fills changed as a result because he's leading with a different hand, and so there's you know a lot of great stuff that you know again you might gloss over. Right, right, and he, he himself probably, like you said, he just doesn't really think about it. It's just what he does, so. It's, yeah, it's not that you know interesting to him, but it's interesting, especially to music fans and other musicians too. You know, um, mm-hmm. which is which is perfect for this for this podcast because that's a lot of the people that are listening to this are um, you know up and coming musicians and and independent musicians, people you know working on you know being a bass player on tour and and. Um, or being a, a studio drummer and stuff like that. Um, I got a, a great, a great message yesterday though from um, a, a woman in Costa Rica who's a who's a natural healing practitioner, and mm-hmm. she listened to one of my podcasts about the essential things to have at a gig as far as like uh, email sign up list. Make sure you have merch, CDs, and she emailed me and said, "This is great. I'm going to use it." Um, so whenever I go do a speaking engagement um, at a yoga center or something, I'm always going to bring my essential oils to sell and use the emailing list. So I think a lot of this stuff is is great for musicians, but it's also universal for really any kind of business. You know, any kind of business can use these these tips and tricks and tactics from from yourself. Yeah, I th- I think so. I mean, most of this again because I started off working with musicians because I I knew as a fan what I wanted to see mm-hmm. from bands and individual musicians. Um, but then as I got more experience with this, I saw oh well I can use this technique with businesses as well. And so that's you know that's kind of along that same line of all right. There's some basic aspects to what I do that can be applied across you know any profession. Definitely with the with the interviewing and talking to the to the businesses and then understanding their story because people love stories and mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what kind of business it is I believe um, if you have a great story you have a a better chance of being successful with whatever that business is because people are very attracted to stories so um, it's brilliant it's brilliant. <laughs> Genius. So um, let everybody know where they can find you. Um, the easiest place is uh, bands2fans.com, B-A-N-D-S-T-O-F-A-N-S.com. Um, 
And I also have connect to fans where I work with, with businesses, but, uh, you know, just to make it easy, you know, just go to bands, to fans, and that'll connect you to the other sites, to the various podcasts, uh, to social media. And it's just a great jumping off point. Perfect. Perfect. So everything bands to fans, it's bands to fans.com mm-hmm. bands to fans.com. You can get everything from there. That's the hub. So, um, thank you very much. Chris, I really appreciate it. Thank you again for, I keep telling and posting about how you helped me get my little uh, podcasting thing up and going. And uh, I really appreciate your help. Like I tell people, you know, you literally, I, I reached out to you, you talked to me through it, and then you sent me links to the exact products, the microphones, all that stuff. Um, and then when I was such a, dumbass that I couldn't get my way through uh, like the platform and everything. Spreaker is what is what you um, suggested that I use and you helped me get through all of that. So thank you again. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your patience and uh, for helping me. Yeah, my pleasure. And it's been uh, been fun to, to watch as, as your own podcast evolves. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, thank you again. I'm having a blast with it. And, um, you know, and oh, yeah, and you have your podcast, so people should definitely go. You, um, just so everybody knows, who are some of the people that you've been interviewing on your podcast? Uh, well, let's see, for the music podcast, uh, again, just mentioned that the, the Greg Loman one uh, just went up. Um, I've interviewed uh, Fred LeBlanc, uh, lead singer of Cowboy Mouth, who uh, is a client. Um, uh, Jonathan Brooke, our mutual friend, Rich Redmond. Uh, and um, uh, oh. Luis Espiat. Luis uh, Espiat, yes. Uh, and, um, and it hasn't been released yet. It, it's probably not coming out for another week or two, but uh, I just did an interview with uh, Emily Salliers from the Indigo Girls. So I'm oh, looking wow. forward to releasing that. Very cool. Very cool. So definitely everybody listening and or watching, listening on YouTube, definitely go check out bands to fans.com because that will have, that'll link up everybody to everything that you've got going on. Right. Yep, exactly. All right. Awesome. Thanks again, Chris. Appreciate it. Thank you.